Hey there, I'm John, you're at Basic Survival. That's right. This is a, we'll just say it's a tutorial on some basic cooking in the kitchen and I'm the guy that's gonna show you how to do it. My experience and knowledge comes from just doing it, being in the kitchen itself. I don't have any formal training, but uh, we're gonna have some fun and uh, that's the way it's gonna go. Why? Because we are men. That's right. We're going to have fun with this. Keep that in mind. All right, so what we're going to make today, biscuits. Biscuits are one of those things that uh, can kind of go with anything. You can use the biscuit dough for dumplings. You can put eggs on biscuits. You can put chicken on biscuits. Biscuits are great. That's right. They're great. First thing you're going to want to do is wear some comfortable clothes. I am in t-shirt and sweatpants and sandals. Wear clothes you're not going to be too concerned about if they get disgusting because you're going to get disgusting. We're working with heat and flour and things happen and you're going to just be... So what I do suggest afterwards however is that you change your clothes before presenting whoever it is you're trying to impress with your biscuits. Okay so very first thing we're going to do after we get into comfortable clothes, we're going to wash our hands. Hand washing while cooking is a must. A must, I say. Why? As I stated before, because we're men and we get disgusting. We do get gross. You can't deny it. It happens. Okay, so we've got hands washed. Comfortable clothes. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to preheat the oven. Oven needs to be preheated for our biscuits to 425 degrees. That's right, 425 degrees. This is the oven. It's a lovely oven. Inside the oven is the pan we're going to be using, which is a cast iron pan. We'll get to that later. So we're going to turn on the oven, we're going to turn it on to 425 degrees. And from there, we are going to start getting everything together. Okay, so starting off with uh, the basics. This is what the recipe calls for. Four cups of flour plus extra, and we'll talk about that in a little bit four teaspoons of baking powder. Don't confuse that with baking soda. It's baking powder. Two tablespoons of sugar. Two teaspoons of salt. Two cups of buttermilk. That's it. That's it. Nothing else. Six ingredients. Nothing else. Keep that in mind because we're going to talk about why I think it's better to bake biscuits from scratch than any other way. So anyway, we cut it off with four cups of flour. And here's the thing. You can clearly buy biscuits pre-made in the store. But you're missing out on some of the best part of a biscuit, okay? When you pull that biscuit out freshly baked and you crack it open and the steam hits you in the face, nothing, nothing is better than that. That and 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 with the knowledge that you did it yourself. Betcha, baby. This is good stuff. So, there's that. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, John, I can get those biscuits that are in a can that I just smack against the counter, and from there, it's a piece of cake, as you know, because you bake it off and it's all good. I'm going to ask you a question. How many ingredients are in that, and are they all really necessary. Now I'm not saying that biscuits are health food and healthy at all. They're not. And too many of them can do this to you. But that being said, those biscuits in a can that got unnecessary ingredients in it, that got chemicals in it, are they all necessary? I don't know. Cracking a can and taking the biscuits out doesn't seem to work for me. Anyway, this is one of the reasons why I like doing this. And it's not that hard. We're men. We can deal with this. This is easy. Okay, so starting off four cups of flour. Now, flour is tricky. The 
very tricky thing. I just went off camera for a moment, but I'm back. Flour is a very tricky thing. You have to measure it just right. If you take flour and you pack it in there, you're making all the air that's in the little flour granules escape, and you're getting it really, really tight. You have more than a cup of flour at that point. You don't want to do that. You really want the flour to be white, full of air, fluffy, so that I get cloud. That's right. Then I get cloud. So, what I like to do is I'll take a spoon. I'll mix the flour up just to aerate it a little bit. And then I'll spoon it in to the cup. Just like this. Now, I always go over, have a nice little mound here, take the spoon and scrape it along the top. Pushing off the excess. And that's one cup of flour. So we're gonna do that three more times. Three more times. Now, I am currently in Florida. But originally, well, originally I'm from California, but I've lived most of my life in Maine. Now in Maine, they have a specialty. They call it strawberry shortcake. And I know you've seen strawberry shortcakes. Maine does it a little different. They actually put the strawberries on biscuits. That's right. Strawberries on biscuits. And then the whipped cream with that. Because, you know, you've seen it with a shortcake, a little, maybe a pound cake or something like that. Which we might discuss in the future as far as that goes. But right now... We're talking biscuits. So it's just one of those versatile things that you can do with it. You can start with shortcake with it. You can, like I said, use the batter. Uh, put it on top of your soup for dumplings. You can take it and you can just pour gravy over it. You could drop eggs on it. For you to, like drop egg on toast, drop egg on a biscuit. Poached egg on a biscuit. Biscuits are good. Biscuits are good. You can hear me say that a lot. So. We've got our four cups of flour in our bowl. Make sure you have a good sized bowl. A good sized bowl is important. After the four cups of flour, we add two tablespoons of sugar. teaspoons of baking powder and two teaspoons of kosher salt. Now you can use regular table salt if you like. I like cooking with kosher salt for a lot of different reasons. I think the flavor is different. I absolutely believe that. I also like the, the texture. There's a slightly, it's a little less refined. It's got a slightly rougher texture to it. Uh, it makes it easier just to do some sprinkling or what have you. So uh, there's that. And then I take a whisk and I whisk this stuff together. Just to get it where we want it to be. And as you can see inside, it just looks like flour. That's good. From here, we add two thirds cup of unsalted butter. And I keep it in the ice box. I've already, I've already uh, cubed it up. You're gonna want to cube it up. Keep it really cold. You keep it really cold because you want the butter to break down more in the oven than in your hands. Because you're gonna get in there and you're gonna knead this stuff together. So you really want it to do that. It keeps things light, it keeps things fluffy that way. And there's nothing worse, nothing worse than having a biscuit that is rock hard. So I recommend doing it this way. Instead of butter, you don't have to use unsalted butter if you don't want to, you can use shortening. 
You can use animal lard. I think uh, butter gives it a better, more creamy texture. And uh, I do recommend that. But like I said, you know, you can, you can change this. You can adapt it. You can make it your own. You know, change a couple of things and you can call it Bill's Biscuits. You know, whatever you want to do. You can, it's up to you. Why? Because we're men and we can change things and nobody cares. I'm good with it. So, go ahead and do that. And afterwards, you're going to break it up. You want to, not too awfully much, but you want to break up that, some of that butter and have it meld in a little bit with the flour mixture. And this, it's also called cutting it in. And there's a couple of ways you can do it. You don't have to use your fingers. I like the tectonic way, so I do it this way. But you can also use a, a pastry cutter. A pastry cutter will work just fine. You just kind of go in there and you break it up a little bit. And you, use, you would use a pastry cutter or maybe even a fork if you didn't want to get a, you know, all floury and stuff. But you know what? We're men. We can deal with that if we so choose. But I'm also, I'm also not going to judge you. If you choose not to use a pastry cutter and use your fingers, that's fine. If you choose to use a pastry cutter or a fork or some other way that I don't even know about, knock yourself out. That's fine. Do not, though, do not melt two-thirds butter and pour it in. Don't do it. It's going to uh, really offset your consistency by quite a bit. You don't want to do that at all. All right. So we've got this nicely, nicely blended a little bit. Looks a little bit like a cornmeal kind of thing. I'm going to wash my hands now again. Cooking, wash hands, often. Paper towels. I like them. I use them. Okay, so after that, we are going to add our two cups of buttermilk. Um, you don't have to use buttermilk. You can use whole milk, 1% milk, skim milk, uh, you can use cream, you can use half and half. It's all going to change the consistency and it's all about, you know, how you want it. I like buttermilk, I like the consistency and I like the flavor. Um, but again, like I said, you know, experiment. Try some things out. It's okay to do that. It's, it's, there's nothing written in stone and it's, it's biscuits, you know, it'll, it'll be good. So, pour in the two cups of your buttermilk. Grab your favorite wooden spoon, which is here. And from here, we stir. And we stir. And we stir. Now, if you recall earlier, I said that we're going to want some extra flour. And we are. Because what we're going to do after stirring and stirring, you have to do a little bit of kneading. It's still going to be a little too wet to make the kind of biscuits we're going to make. So what we need to do is knead some more flour into it to get a little uh, more, uh, it's a, uh, solidified is the wrong word because you really don't want it too dry, but it will uh, at least make it in such a way that we can we can handle it. You don't want your biscuits to be too dry because if you biscuits did get too dry, you'd be pulling out the best smelling hockey pucks you've ever smelled, and that's the truth. Coming from Maine, I know a lot of people would probably like good smelling hockey pucks. You don't want to eat these though because uh, you can hurt your teeth, and you know teeth are important. So uh, you want to you know, don't want it too dry. You don't want to cook them too long. Clearly, um, you really want to uh, just get the, the perfect. Biscuit can do consistency, you know, you'll see that, we'll take a look at that. Anyway, so moving on, we take the batter, and we're going to dump it onto this floured surface. And we are going to knead more dough into it. Do 
Don't get sticky. Don't uh, don't be surprised. It does get sticky, but that's okay. Do you know why that's okay? Because by golly, we're men and we can deal with it. That's why we just deal with it. This is basic survival, and it is not going to uh, make things too awfully hard on you, because we're just talking about some basic biscuits right at the moment. But if you can't deal with basic biscuits, and the stickiness, that's the stove, the oven rather, telling you that's uh, at temperature. If you can't make basic biscuits, if you can't grasp this, how are we going to deal with the homemade lasagna we talked about in the future, or maybe a rib roast or something like that? This, it's the basics. And that's what we're talking about now. We learn, we build upon, we learn some more, we build some more. We are men. That's how we do it. All right, so, got the flour, got the batter, more flour on top. This more tactile stuff. I take it and I kind of fold it over in on itself and push down again. That is the way you're going to need that extra flour in there. You're going to feel, as I do, the lumps of butter. The lumps of unmelted butter. And like I said before, that's good. We don't want it to melt. We want it to melt inside the oven. We don't want it to melt anywhere else. A little more flour. A little more kneading. And if you want, you can go ahead and sing a song. Any song you want. All kinds of songs. I will start singing right now, but you might not come back if I start singing right now. Okay. So, add a little bit more flour. And a little bit more kneading. And as you can see, I'm getting a little, that's right. So why we wear clothes that we don't really stress about while we cook, but afterwards, we change. We get classy and we just change. Okay. So, when your dough reaches the consistency of the play dough, essentially, but a little, little looser, it's ready for cutting. Wash my hands again, because that's important. Then we're going to talk about cast iron cookware. I love cast iron. Love it. Cast iron has been around, and as far as I'm concerned, since the dawn of time. Absolutely love cast iron. This is my cast iron pizza sheet that we're going to use for our biscuits. You can use a cookie sheet, you can use stoneware, you can use anything you want. You can use, you can use a cast iron skillet if you so desire. All of those will work. I like cast iron. Cast iron, once it gets hot, it stays hot for a while. It heats evenly throughout, so you don't really have cold spots. I like that about cast iron. And it does, it gets screaming hot. You can, you can use nonstick. I don't have a problem with nonstick. Um, I will say this about nonstick uh, bakeware. Uh, there is a coating on there. That coating is made with chemicals. If it gets scraped, and it inevitably happens. It happens all the time. If that stuff gets scraped, it ends up in the food that you're eating or your family's eating. I don't know what that does. I don't know. This is cast iron. This is seasoned with oil at a high temperature to create um, its own type of nonstick service. It's not super nonstick like, like some of the others, but it's great for our purposes today. I'm not even gonna oil the pan. Because the combination of the butter that's in the dough and the, and the uh, nonstick surface here, I don't need to oil it. 
So, next step in our little project here is we are going to cut the biscuits and we're going to find the cookie cutter that I had. Here it is. This is the cookie cutter. Uh, it's got a smooth edge. You can get them smooth edged. Clearly you can get them um, with a, like a bit of a ruffled edge. That gives the biscuit along the edge uh, a crunchiness to it. I'm not, it's my, and this is personal preference, I kind of like it with a smooth edge over the other. Uh, with this, the bottom's going to be crispy and crunchy, the top is going to be crunchy and crispy, and, and you know, the middle is going, and around the edge is going to be kind of a soft. I like it that way. But that's me. You can do whatever you want. Now, if you don't have one of these, might I suggest you use this. This is a regular drinking glass. You take the drinking glass, you dip the edges of it in flour, and you go ahead and you cut around and use that. Works great. I've done it many times. No problem with that. It works fantastic. So, we're going to take our flour and remove our spoon. Take the cookie cutter, and we're just going to uh, lightly dust it, and then cut and place it in the pan. Now, I've placed it on the edge of the pan here. I'm going to go right around in a circle and it's going to be completely filled up. I'm not just subjected to watching that, so I'll be right back. This will be filled up and we'll talk some more. Thanks! Okay, so here we have the biscuits. They're laid out flat, a single sheet. I'm going to place them in the oven. Remember, Keep the oven preheated. You really want to preheat to put that in there, 425. We're going to set the timer for about 20 minutes. Now, it usually takes a little bit more than 20 minutes. It takes ballpark 25. 25 minutes. I'd start checking it at 20. Um, golden brown on top, golden brown on the bottom. You're good to go. So here's the thing. The kitchen and myself right now, a mess. Now, the woman in your life or your partner in your life might be impressed that you made biscuits. Because, you know, as I've been told, there's nothing sexier, sexier than a man who knows how to cook. But, it's not entirely true. Because a man who cleans up after himself after cooking is sexier still. So, clean up your mess. I'm going to clean my mess up. I'm going to change my clothes. When I'm done, the biscuits will be ready. We'll talk then. See you shortly. Okay, biscuits are out. You can see they're nice and golden brown on top, which is a good thing. Go ahead and grab one of these things. Golden brown on the bottom, hot. And that's steam coming out of there, folks. And it smells fantastic. You see, I've changed my clothes. Don't be a slob. When you cook, you are going to spill stuff on you. You're going to sweat. Don't be gross. Serving the food. Have a little bit of class. That being said, a couple of things uh, I want to just wrap up real quick. You know, you've heard me mention that we are men and we can deal with this. Well, that's true. I am kind of directing a lot of this towards guys. I don't want it to come across sexist, but I do want it to come across as, you know what, guys? I hear a lot of people say that men can't cook. And that those men that can cook only can like, grill. Not that there's anything wrong with grilling. Grilling rocks. Okay. But it's a, it is a versatile man who can cook more than just one thing. Cleaning up is important. Make sure you do that. We are men. We can do this. It is important because uh, it's important that our significant others aren't eating food out of a box all the time, or cooking for us all the time. This way you can take a part in that and actually surprise in the process. Something I wanted to mention concerning the flour, I used, um, I did not use self-rising flour. Self-rising flour has baking powder in it. I think it is important to be in control of all of your ingredients, which is why I used unsalted butter so you can control any salt intake you decide to put into it. Um, 
I used all-purpose flour. We used baking powder. I'm not going to add extra. I have no idea how much they put into the self-rising flour. So I'll just keep that in mind. In the meantime, uh, I hope this works out. Let me know if it did. Let me know if it didn't. Let me know if you made any changes and how that played. Uh, my name is John. I'll see you next time on Basic Kitchen Survival. Thank you. Ciao.